And then the music, the riffing? <sighs> it's, they stopped really being inventive um, before the end of the 60s. I think it was really when Brian Jones ceased to be a dominant force in the band. Did they stop going into new areas of sound? They're just doing the stone sound, but it's a great sound. Um, and what is sp specifically uh, Keith? Keith's part in this song, Doom and Gloom? It's, I mean, it's just the riff, you know, and the voice. I mean, you know, that, that it's a combination you can't beat, but I mean, I don't think it... You, you can't expect men of 70 to make pop music like they made when they were 20, you know. Um, I met another great uh, songwriter the other day, Neil Sedaka, who said he's giving up writing pop songs because he can't top the things he wrote when he was an adolescent. You, know? you can't... The thing about being a rock star is you can go on being an adolescent, you, you'd never have to grow up. But in terms of musical sort of spontaneity and energy, nothing can really beat those very early Stones tracks. Um, well, you were saying uh, his, his, his voice, of, he had a voice of Mick Jagger, come from another planet. Can you pinpoint when it started? It started really with, um, after, satis after satisfaction in the later 60s and particularly when they started doing country rock um, and Mick starts singing in a kind of Ozark Mountain hillbilly accent as well as a blues man's accent. Um, and those sort of ones right at the end, like uh, the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, like Wild Horses. If you write those down phonetically, I mean, it's like, it is like another dialect. It's not, there's no resemblance to American English or English English. So how come people like this? Because they, they love him, you know. You can't get around it. At the age of seven, nearly 70, he gets people just as excited today as he did when he was in his 20s. How come? Because this amazing persona was given to him when he was 19 of a wicked rock and roll rebel who was uh, drowning in alcohol and drugs and depravity. He was never like that at all. But the manager, the original manager of the Stones, Andrew Oldham, decided that he would create a group who were the opposite of the Beatles. The Beatles were charming, smiley, um, soci socially acceptable. The Stones would be wicked and wild and rebellious. Mick wasn't wild and rebellious at all. But Andrew Oldham said, if you pretend to be this, you'll be rich. And so that's what he's been doing for 50 years. How come the people still buy it? Because really, rock music doesn't change. They're still playing the same chords and they're still striking the same attitudes on stage that the Stones and the Beatles were doing in the early 60s. Every gener new generation of fans think they have discovered this music, but it's the same music. And the Stones wrote the book, really, on how to be a rock band. The Beatles weren't a rock band. The Beatles were the Beatles. They were like nothing else. The Stones were the first real rock band where the, the vocalist didn't play a guitar. They'd always played guitars before. He stood in front and his movements and his moves and his body language were part of the show, as the Beatles never moved around. Um, but suddenly with Mick, the moves were part of the show and every other rock vocalist who came along really had to copy him. There was nothing else to do. Even today, a new vocalist, a new band is Mick. Like you were saying, move like Jagger. It's moves like Jagger, you know, a highly contemporary new song, and it's about moving like Jagger. What does he think of this? Of this book? No, I mean, of this, uh, well, first this book, but the first question of the song Move Like Jagger. I don't know what he thinks of it. Um, he's all, he never dwells on the, uh, he's always moving on into the future. He'll be thinking of the next thing, the next attempt to prove himself to be very young and cool and current and, you know, to disown his actual age and to just be working on some, something new, never looking back. He doesn't look back on this career, which has, is full of the most amazing achievements, artistic, creative ach achievements, um, achievements in sort of popular and social culture. He just doesn't look back. He pretends he can't remember any of it. How come he doesn't look back? Because he wants to be young and being young is being in the now, the here and now. Older people are nostalgic for the past. Um, looking back is part of being old, older. He doesn't want to do that. 